Welcome to this channel. For this video, we will be analyzing the very magnificent, beautiful movie, The World to Come. So, um, I hope you're able to watch the movie already. Uh, because if you haven't, I suggest you have this video on pause and watch the movie first. Because I will be um, somehow revealing some scenes and some um, storyline, some situations in the movie that might spoil you and you might not like that. So let's start. Um, the world to come. So uh, I first learned about this movie actually very recently. I think like um, early January when when I saw it on my timeline and at first I was really surprised because I am a huge huge fan of um, Vanessa Kirby and I just do not know why this movie wasn't able to you know arrive in my radar I, I wasn't able to really um, be informed of that she'll be making a movie, somehow a queer movie with um, um, Catherine Waterstone. So that's why when I saw the um, news that they said that this year, uh, like around February and March or March, uh, they'll be having the, the world to come um, showing. So I was like, wow, <laughs> very timely. So when I first watched the trailer of the world to come, I I was just really blown away, especially with that scene of Waterstone when she's like saying astonishment and joy. And I was like, ah, right then and there, I know I I will watch this movie. Yeah, I was just sold by that scene. Well, actually many scenes in the trailer. And it was really worth the wait. I was able to watch it in its very first um, week of of streaming and this the movie really sits in my heart and up until now it still lingers in my memory and I tend to uh, rewatch uh, some scenes some parts of it uh, whenever I feel bored and it, because it's that good it's like it's like my favorite movie of the moment and. I I am just really um, excited to somehow analyze the film um, based on my own appreciation. So a disclaimer, if you do not somehow feel like what I am interpreting is uh, very far from what you have somehow absorbed, I am actually very willing to hear your thoughts and please comment down below of all the things that you feel after watching this beautiful movie. So this movie um, is actually directed by a woman, so Mona Fastbold, and um, she's really, really creative. The manner and the, the ways of presentation of the story, I was just really surprised by, by the the um, purity of, of her approach and it, it it felt like as if the movie hit you with a solid emotion um, some said it, uh, the movie is slow and leading nowhere that's their opinion and I respect it but in my eyes and in my heart and in my mind and in my soul I know it is not a, a movie that is uh, wasteful of their time so for me, it's a movie that I will continue to watch. Even if it is painful, I will continue to watch this. So I am grateful of the director with the vision that she uh, had and she delivered. So the setting of this movie is in um, the 19th century North America. Um, though it is supposed to be uh, uh, somehow in United States, the early uh, historical uh, moments of United States, um, the crew actually um, had it um, taped in Romania, uh, maybe because of the appearance of, of the, the place, um, it suits the, the uh, 19th century North America. And it's really, I, I was sold by it. It's really, really beautiful. So setting-wise, cinema, cinematography-wise, like 
this beautiful uh, scenery right here. It's 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 fantastic. It's just really beautiful, and the variation of colors it gives you like uh, a vibrant color and then a sad color. That just by the appearance of the the location itself, you will know what's the next emotion that you will be feeling. So it's it's just that um, artistic. Uh, it's really artistically presented. And also, um, the the movie has this setting of isolation, and they actually really have a very short list of characters and and actors that that played in the movie, and that actually helps having a very small cast, uh, since the entire uh, movie revolves around isolation and being on their own, thriving and surviving, having a domestic life. So having like um, two pair of, of, of uh, husband and wife in the story. It, it, it really suits the, the um, isolation team and the domestic life. And I, I, I'm really uh, sold by that um, layering of, of story. So I'm, I, I really find it um, nice, the short um, cast and um, its, its isolation team. And with regards to character analysis, so let's talk about um, the each character. So anyway, there are only four. So it's just really um, somehow easy to, to analyze them. So let's start first with Penny. So Penny is actually um, played by Christopher Abbott. And when I watch um, his gestures and manner of speaking and his lines I, I really uh, I actually I watched the movie twice the one with no subtitle and then the second time I watch it with subtitle and the, the second one really um, made me understand Penny Dyer more because of the, um, the subtitle because this movie actually used very deep vocabulary, English vocabulary that um, having subtitle in there really helps a lot in analyzing. So uh, with Penny, I feel like his mind is all over the place. Like sometimes he say things that are um, for me out of the blue or out of the topic. But if you really digest what he's trying to say, he, he tend to use Bible verses and um, anecdotes to express his emotion, his feeling. So that's why you really need to focus and, and listen carefully to what he is saying for you to know what he really is trying to say. So that's the kind of man Penny is. And um, as a husband, I feel like he is very lavish in living like he he lived for showing like um he wants people to see him as successful but um actually skill wise he's not that very skillful to maintain the uh the lifestyle that he wants to live so i feel like penny is not a good um farmer or a worker um he's 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 just all over the place he's, he's not focused he he do not actually really know what he really wants um, so that's how I analyze Penny as a character and and what I really somehow find um, disturbing about his character is his fascination towards violence and death that there was this time when she, uh, he's speaking with his wife Tally um, he mentioned about the brutality uh, that he heard a story in the neighborhood that there's this brutality that happened to one of their neighbors. And it was just really odd to hear someone speak about violence with so much enthusiasm. And Penny, Penny um, shows passion about violence and death, which... Uh, will actually be connected uh, to the uh, somehow the um, concluding portion of this movie, his, his passion and fascination towards violence and death. So that's Penny, the husband of Tally. So the next character is Dyer. So Dyer is played by Casey Affleck. And um, actually, as I am uh, studying about 
um, this movie, um, I know there are a lot of people who do not like Casey Affleck to be part of this movie. But sad to say, he is the uh, producer and he is a good actor. Um, whether you like him or not, uh, we cannot deny the fact that the guy is, he really knows how to act. And I am so amazed of the character development that Dyer showed in the movie. Um, I, I, I watched um, a review uh, about the, uh, the world to come and they say how, how narrow the characters are, that there's no depth. I, I completely disagree with that comment uh, because with, with Dyer, the, the way Casey Affleck um, played Dyer, it has depth. And, and you see the, the change of perspective that at first I was really afraid of him, that I, I, I can sense that with, with so much love Dyer has for Abigail, I feel like if he learned about Tali and Abigail, he, he might kill Tali. There's also a scene wherein uh, he was actually uh, looking uh, from afar when Tali left their house and when Tali met with with Abigail and with that scene I, I at first I predicted ah it's gonna be Dyer who'll do uh, something um, bad for these two um, amazing women but 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 he did not he's actually a very noble man um, he's he's such a a true laborer a hard-working true laborer that um, if if to have a husband during that time, um, and if you have dire during that time, your your life will be fine. So I, I feel like Abigail really um, is very fortunate to have dire in her life. Uh, it's just that dire is so much of uh, he wanted to be pampered, he wanted to be maybe seen and loved um, much more than he could actually give. That's why, for me, he appears to be very um, clingy towards Abigail. That Abigail tends to give him what he wanted, service-wise, um, um, housewife um, role, and things like that. Abigail was able to really fulfill all of that. But for Dyer, he always wanted more from Abigail. Um um, emotionally speaking, attention speaking, like that. So um, maybe that's the thing about Dyer. He always wanted to be pampered and seen by Abigail. Maybe that's uh, his way of, of relaxing or that's his way of, you know, getting his mind out of the difficult labor that he is doing for, for their family. So yeah, Dyer is really good, kind, patient man. And if, if only Dyer is the only man in the story, maybe Tali will still be alive. <laughs> but um, of course we have Finney in there, the, the um, violent um, man in, in the story. So uh, it's just not all Dyer. So, but I, I like Dyer's character. He's really a gentleman. And he truly loves um, Abigail. So next character is of course the earthly beauty, the the astonishment and joy. It's it's Tali. So um, played by the ever beautiful Vanessa Kirby, and um, I I watched in an interview when Waterstone said um, that she's very happy that Vanessa took the role because she could not imagine anyone playing Tali. And I completely, 100% agree with Catherine when she said that because Tali, the, the role of Tali, it's just really for Vanessa. Vanessa's beauty, Vanessa's acting, it's just really, really natural when, when you see her being Tali. And it's just really beautiful. So Tali is uh, beautiful and, and a giver. I, I look at her, she's really such a giver. Maybe not to Finney, because he, maybe she do not like or love Finney. But whenever Tali 
find someone that she really likes. She tends to be a giver. So that's what actually happened to them with uh, with uh, to uh, Tali and Abigail. They actually developed this relationship at first, like 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 friends. But um, as time passes by, you could really see how much attention Tali is giving Abigail, especially with the giving of gifts on Abigail's birthday. It's so much like one basket filled of everything beautiful, everything amazing that um, during that time, if you're living in such isolation and, and you receive those gift, gifts that, that Tali gave to Abigail, it's... It's just really generous, very, very generous. So I see Tali as a generous woman to the people that she loves. So um, I am really in awe of the of how Tali understands Abigail's love language because Abigail is very quiet and, and Tali is the one like poking the the fire within Abigail and so that's such a really good um, acting skill for uh, Vanessa Kirby. She was really able to show her dominance and, and the power that she possessed you know, to, to crack open a person like Abigail. And really, I'm really amazed by Vanessa Kirby's um, acting in here. Plus, aside from her role to be lover of Abigail, um, Tali is also seen as a dreamer. Like she wants a life far more than just a housewife of, of Penny. Like you could see her dreaming of a life out of the cage as, as, as she mentioned in the movie so she's not that uh, type of a woman that you will actually really put into cage and expect her to do um, wifely duties and uh, I, I really admire her for that she wanted to do more and I appreciate Vanessa Kirby when she said in an interview how much grateful she is to the life that she has now uh, because playing Tali gave her um, an idea of how limited life could be uh, back then so I, I love her um, self-realization self-actualization in those interviews so I'm uh, really amazed by this actor's dedication and understanding of their role. Really beautiful. And of course, the last character to uh, analyze is Abigail, played by Catherine Waterstone. I've seen Catherine Waterstone in many movies in different genre and um, Alien Covenant is like one of my favorite movies of her. Um, she's She's really, she, her acting skill has a massive range. And that's why her playing Abigail in, the, in that appearance, in that very soft, shy, introverted, emotionally reserved um, character. I was actually very uh, surprised to see her play that kind of role. Because most of the role that she's taking are really hardcore, badass woman. So... I'm amazed. I'm amazed by her 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 range as an actress, and um, what I like is her um, voice because she narrated um, the the movie. Um, her her uh, the thoughts of Abigail, the thoughts of Abigail written in her journal is actually being narrated by um, the actress Catherine Catherine Waterstone. So I I I find her pronunciation and her tone very artistic, very appealing. So perfect somehow. Everything, the delivery, and then very wordsmith, what I'm trying to say, like very wordsmith. So the character Abigail is, um, uh, as I not as I analyze with her, she feels a lot and keeps a lot inside her mind. So whenever she feels something, she's not that very expressive. Um, in the first part of the movie, she was in pain due to the loss of her daughter. Uh, due to diphtheria but um, she um, Abigail in there really um, control her emotion really grab the emotion by the throat and just really put it 
there inside closed and only her journal is her like her her channel of expressing those emotion and i i actually kind of um resonate or relate with with Abigail's character in there because i'm the type of a woman where in i cannot express myself directly to everyone only to the people that i i really emotionally connect with so most of the time whenever i'm not around with those people that i emotionally connect with i tend to um express my thoughts through art so i sketch i draw um i i sometimes write in a journal but most of the time my my feelings are uh, somehow channeled uh, through art So I really um, can relate to Abigail when she's like that. But the beauty with the story of Abigail is that um, she's reserved, and then came uh, a character like Tali, who somehow cracked open that um, very reserved attitude. And together, they had this very burning, passionate intense relationship and it is not just about the love or the 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 relationship of two women it, it's way more than that it's the story the that these two possess is like um soul connection like you could they i i love that uh, a scene where in um tally and abigail like sitting in, in the porch and then they're just watching the sunset Um, the sun to set it's wow that that's the kind of relationship that's the kind of emotional attachment that a person like abigail craves for so i was just happy to see that scene because um it it shown it showed in there the simplicity of life that happiness is that image Okay. That's why if you heard anyone saying that um, this movie is sad, don't watch it. It's not true. It's not true. Just because the ending is sad, it doesn't mean the entire movie is sad. It is not. It is not a sad movie all along. There are some parts that you'll cry, but I think that's part of life. That's part of journey. So I I respect the the uh, variety of emotion presented in this movie. So don't ever put the world to come in a box and and expect that just because the ending is like that, it's all sad. No, it is not. It's a very colorful movie. So now let's talk about. Uh, the my favorite scenes so i have top five favorite scenes in the world to come so the first one is the scene uh, we're in of course their first kiss so the first kiss happened in the cabin of abigail when um tally entered and somehow trying to compare colds so but the entire scene is really uh, majestic so the the scene we're in when when they're about to kiss but um tally um retreated and abigail asks so this is my favorite um top five favorite um scene and quote so why didn't you do what you attempted to do so that line why didn't you do what you attempted to do and that is for me a very impactful um sentence to say during that moment that she's like telling tally that it's fine continue doing it so it's it's a it's a beautiful scene next scene the fourth scene that i like is um when they're just having their simple moment in the forest um they're just you know laying down and then tally decided to share um a, a stanza in a poem that um she composed I am not sure if it is the poem that she mentioned in the first kiss scene wherein she said she was so enamored of of Abigail that she composed a poem entitled Oh sick and miserable heart be still I am not sure <laughs> if that's the poem that she recited in here so um in this scene it's really funny because she stated the first stanza and <laughs> 
it is so far from the um, word power um, of Abigail because Abigail is really wordsmith. So when Tali uh, somehow um, created that very cute, simple poem, um, somehow Abigail cannot um, help but to laugh at it. And she said, I cannot support the rhyme. And the scene after that is just really, really sweet. And it's, it's, it's just soft. Very, very soft. So, yeah. Next. The third scene that I like is when... <laughs> well, actually, this, this is, for me, very intimate... Um, get together of the two so when um somehow tali um um forcefully kiss abigail and said that she believed that intimacy increases goodwill and she proceeded to say a lot of things why she thinks being together is actually good for everyone so basically she proved that being together it's good for their farmland it's good for their duty it's good for their husband so they can they did the thing so it was just really really um beautiful a beautiful scene so again, this entire movie is not all about sadness. There is still a pinch of cuteness, pinch of uh, loveliness uh, in it. The second one, the, uh, my favorite scene is, of course, I think this will go in history as one of the most remarkable scene in movies. Um, I'm just really excited for this pandemic to stop or to, to end because once people get a dose of the world to come into their lives and they see the scene of astonishment and joy that was somehow stated by Catherine Waterstone. This will be a very important um, scene in cinema, in cinematic history. It's really, really that good. Or if not going to be that massive scale, like historically speaking, it could actually be um, a trademark of, of Catherine Waterstone in the future. Um, just the same way with uh, Kate Blanchett, uh, with uh, My Angel Flung Out of Space in Carol, um, Catherine Waterstone will have her own uh, line somehow, tagline, and that is Astonishment and Joy. And that scene is actually the, con the, the, the next scene after their first kiss. So um, that scene, it's very relatable in a sense that after your first kiss with someone, you just really just let loose, let go, and you only feel astonishment and joy. So that scene right there perfectly captures how it feels like to fall in love and completely let go, let go and let loose. And, and of course, the number one, the, I think the tear-jerking scene that actually when I watched it the first time and even the second time, I, I cried. Uh, uh, I cannot remember how, how much tears I shed in that scene when um, Abigail uh, went to Tali's um, place. Um, they already moved um, far, far west. So when Abigail learned about um, uh, Tali's location, she went there. But it was all too late. Um, I suspect um, Tali was already been poisoned by Finney. And the scene wherein um, uh, somehow Tali, I, I mean Abigail's reading Tali's letter. And there's that line that um, Tali said to Abigail that Abigail is her city of joy. And what a wonderful way to say I love you. Right? You are my city of joy. After watching that scene, I have this thinking that saying I love you these days is very, very, it runs out its meaning. The word I love you is no longer meaningful. And this movie gave a new 
um, praise to give meaning of such feeling when you're in love with someone it's so uh, simple to just say i love you tali is in love with abigail and she said abigail is her city of joy and i believe that is the best way to say how much you love someone and how much that someone makes you happy and make your life worth living so that's why even the world to come somehow have a dramatic ending um, having the character of Vanessa Kirby die it is still for me a very wonderful ride and even I cried a lot in that scene I will not be afraid to rewatch it again because it's so worth it especially after the the um you are my city of joy scene when the two uh, when when abigail saw the dead body of tali and then the flashback happened and worth the wait everything worth having is worth waiting and that montage the final montage it's just perfection very good timing, very good artistic um, vision of the director, uh, director Mona Passbolt. And it's amazing. So in general, my general impression of this movie, it's going to be a cult classic. I, I can see it. I can see it. It's going to be a cult classic like Carol. Though Carol is a very lighthearted film, that you will actually want to watch um, every time you want to feel happy and you want to watch every holidays. But um, the world to come could also be in that sense. If you um, reach the level of, of understanding about the story of Tali and Abigail, but if you still do not understand the depth of their relationship, um, maybe it's not gonna be a good vibe movie for you because all you could actually think of is that the other character died but maybe for me I've seen so much um, less film that ended dramatically that I am no longer somehow in pain when I see death it's that death that really disappoints me to a film it's the lack of um, depth it's, it's the lack of 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 story or the lack of purpose and for me the world to come is rich with all of that and yeah um, i'm just really happy to uh, somehow in general i really like uh, the world to come and also um i uh, this movie has the best dialogues in a movie that i have ever seen the dialogues are, wow, just amazing. Like, whoever wrote those lines, man, you are my city of joy. Diba? Astonishment and joy. It's just, Those are really beautiful lines. And, like, amazing. Amazing. You, yeah, just the best. Best dialogues. Okay. And, of course... Will I ever forget to mention about the chemistry? So, with this movie, I I really hope after this, I'm I'm really hopeful. Can we have another Catherine Waterstone and Vanessa Kirby movie? Like, please just have them be together, even in modern time, uh, like a modern setup, and just be a couple. Just. <laughs> I just need more of them. <laughs> and if you can relate to me, uh, comment down below. If you share the same sentiment, I want more from this too. I just really want more. <laughs> and I, I am actually, uh, I, I always visit their Instagram, <laughs> like trying to uh, see if they will somehow mention one another, say something about one another. I'm, I, I just ship them so so badly no because their chemistry is really that strong really really that strong and of course the last um, general impression i would like to share is my impression of the soundtrack so the soundtrack has a volcanic emotions embedded to it 
it's just really impactful the the sound of it like it resembles carol uh, when i listen to it it resembles the tone in carol but this one in the world to come it's it's more sad it's more sad and and it's very um expressive in a sense like it's more expressive for me than carol but still if you will ask me which is still which what's my number one the world to come or carol it's still gonna be carol carol is like the barometer and the world to come um, is one of my favorite um, period dramas there is so it is not better than carol but it is indeed better than ammonite and debate me with that like post your comment below if you uh, disagree <laughs> that um, the world to come is better than ammonite i love kate winslet okay kate winslet good um sir sharonen good the movie I cannot say the same. Also plan to give analysis for Ammonite and also Carol, Portrait of a Lady on Fire, and all those um, period drama, and even the modern um, less films. I am um, going to make content to that. But if you also would like to uh, suggest um, uh, me to analyze a certain film which I am sure I have already seen it so just comment down below and I'll try to do an analysis of that so one final note in this video is that the build up of their story is greater than the pain of its ending so that's that for me and i hope you uh, enjoy the world to come the same way that i did i am looking forward to uh, discuss your opinion regarding this movie so bye